Hello, gorgeous Cancerian moon children. I am so happy to be sitting with you. It just feels so good to be in this conversation. Every time I get to talk to you all, I just feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk about October because it is a powerful month. It, it really is. Um, we are in the heart of Mars retrograde, right? And for cardinal signs, this is just an amplified Mars retrograde, right? Like because it's a fellow cardinal sign here. A lot of that Mars retrograde for Cancerians, especially a Cancer rising, is going to be do, having to do with who you are in this world, who you want to be, you know, the impression you want to make, how you want to move through this world. And that is pretty powerful on its own, but of course, that's not the only thing going on. We also have a Mercury retrograde moving through Scorpio and then back into Libra. So that's going to be hitting, you know, your fifth heart chakra house and also your fourth house um, home and family and the hidden and the inner, inner life. There's two full moons this month, one in Aries on the October 1st and one in Taurus on October 31st. And these are going to be really great luminaries to lead us forward, explore who we are becoming. They're very visionary moons. And not only that, but to really contextualize October, I think in the rest of the year is important right now. And I, I'm sure I'll be doing this in November too. But the thing that's happening is that this month, Saturn goes direct on September 29th. And then Pluto goes direct on October 4th. And there's starting to be this forward motion toward big energies leaving Capricorn and moving into Aquarius. So you've had Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto all in your opposing sign of Capricorn for a while now. And that's been a big phase uh, for a lot of us <laughs> uh, who have, have cardinal energy in our chart or work closely with Cancer Capricorn energy. And so there's also just this culminating feeling between the heart of Mars retrograde, a Mercury retrograde coming in for review, and uh, and this, this shift toward energy moving out of Capricorn in December, we are, we're coming to an understanding about what it is we've learned. We are coming to kind of some deeper, deeper, deeper understandings of all that. And along with that, you know, it's it's never just, oh, I have a deeper understanding done, right? That's like one step. The next step is going to be, now that I have this deeper understanding, how am I going to liberate myself into the next phase? How am I going to let myself keep riding the wave forward and not just sit in the, okay, I understand because you know what happens when we do that, right? We just start to sit, we just sit with the, okay, I understand, so I'm going to relive it, I'm going to think it over again, I'm going to be still there, I'm going to keep understanding it, I'm going to keep processing it, I'm going to keep analyzing it. And I think the big invitation, especially as I was feeling in Cancerian energy this month, is to let yourself understand and then keep riding this big, bold, wild wave. And that's a big part of October. And I think, you know, October is a powerful time of year <laughs> we get we get into a very psychically connected time um, and for water signs obviously that's always going to be pretty powerful and it means that you know you're kind of tapped into a lot of energies all at once but the message that came through for me is you have to be willing to see what's next give yourself time to rest Breathe when you can, rest when you can, dream when you can. It's okay to use those tools, right? And it's not like you have to do it 24 hours a day, but when you can, let yourself start to crack open a little bit into this next book. You know, with each wave of understanding, allow the next wave of growth and opening to happen. There's a liberation from a cycle. There's a liberation from whatever it is that you needed to learn. And with that comes new adventures ahead. And it may take some time. Okay, five of swords. <laughs> it may take some time to see all of that, right? You know, the next couple of months may not be where the path is super, super clear and crisp and cut. 
the moon. I love it. But you can start to kind of open up to it, right? You can start to let yourself tap into the next cycle. Um, and, you know, more contextualization. So we're we are going to have Saturn and Jupiter moving out of Capricorn in December. They're going to have this grand conjunction. We will talk about that, especially over on my Patreon, um, where they meet. You know, Saturn and Jupiter do not meet often. And when they do, it's a moment. And they're meeting on the solstice in Aquarius. But as this energy moves into Aquarius, six of wands, love it. As this energy moves into Aquarius, you're going to start to notice that you're working with eighth house energy. Okay, two more cards wanted to come out. Seven of swords and five of cups. Have no worries. This has been some themes for a lot of us. Uh, you guys have quite the nuanced read here, I have to say. Um, regardless, a lot of energy is going to start moving into your eighth house here in Aquarius. And that is actually, I think, such a bonus, especially for a water sign. Because the eighth house is like the, the house of transformation, right? Death and rebirth. Um, it's like the stuff that you don't talk about at the dinner table, right? The, the hidden and the taboo. And it's also, you know, a deeply psychic deeply connected energy. And I think especially for water signs or somebody who works well with water energy, this can be such a great time. And obviously this is for next year. But one of the things with that is that you are able to tap into the hidden, the unseen, the underbelly, the, 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 the deep rich soil of life that isn't immediately apparent to everybody around you uh, who's just like building life step by step, but that can have really rich rewards. But what's important about October, let's get back here, is that you are allowing yourself to start using the tools that are coming up and out during this time and to really allow yourself to use the gifts you have, Cancer, because sometimes I think, you know, you have these amazing gifts to be very tuned in, very aware, very good at like hitting the nail on the head, honestly. I think like Cancerians, like when you're in your zone, you don't waste a lot of time like getting confused about things. It's like, you know, you know the thing you need to go do. You know the, the path that's right for you. You know the opening and it's like on point. It's wild. Um, and but sometimes I think you second guess those gifts, those abilities, because culturally they are, you know, we're, we're shifting slowly, but culturally they're kind of often put to the side or said, those are, that's not really real, right? Like that's not something that's actually happening. You can't really use those gifts to, to dictate your life. Like you're kidding yourself, right? And so it's very easy to shut off your gifts and your skills and your abilities. And I think this month, what I'm saying here is that it's important for you to let yourself use your gifts. It's important to let yourself use all the talents you have. And actually, that's what I'm seeing here in these cards. You know, I pulled five for you. Okay. And we start with five of swords, which obviously this has a lot to do with trust and a lack of trust and worrying. And yeah, you might have somebody you can't trust, but often what I say with this is this is about self-trust. This is about you letting your intuition give you the information and actually listening to it. And what happens when we, we know something deep down, right? We know something that's true for us, that we want to pursue this thing or that we need to take a break from something or whatever it is. And then we don't listen to it and we make ourselves do it anyway. It doesn't even have to be something insidious or terrible or inherently evil. It can just be like, you keep volunteering for that thing, but you really don't mean it anymore. It feels bad, right? We start feeling out of connection with our bodies, out of connection with our souls, out of connection with who we are. We get grumpy. We start, you know, you can't selectively shut down one part of yourself. So you start kind of disconnecting from everything, right? And so Five of Swords is telling me that like, you may feel like you aren't allowed to trust your inner guidance system or like you're not allowed to, tr to use your skills. But, come on, <laughs> the moon and the six of wands. To me, this says everything. 
This is like really where I want you to focus this month. Uh, there's other cards going on here and we're gonna continue talking obviously, but this right here is where it's at because this is all about moving. Your triumph comes from using your Cancerian gifts, the beautiful ability to dream, to connect in, to, like I said, hit the nail on the head. You know, when you, when a Cancerian takes that moment, right, gives themselves the grace to use their intuitive wisdom and their knowing, you know, just that five minute pause or that 10 minute pause even to really listen and then follows up with the action, with the word, with the connection, whatever it is. And I mean, it really requires that honest listening, right? Things happen really fast and in a really good way, but it does require that you let yourself go there. And there are gonna be voices that are really loud right now that are telling you that's not real, that's not valuable, don't do that. And you can't let that strip that beautiful power away from you, right? So it's really important. And that's where that Five of Swords is coming in because that's that voice that tells you don't trust yourself. It's a gaslighting voice, right? There's some complex energy going on with the Seven of Swords and the Five of Cups. And it's not negative in like the sense of um, bad things happening to you. You don't have to get like um, paranoid about October. You know, these two are about a journey, an emotional journey, a spiritual journey, a transformative journey. And they both are talking about one, stepping into a new role, and two, grieving an old role, grieving an old life, grieving an old cycle. Um, and these energies are quite strong for October. They've been kind of showing up around in the readings. Um, and I think there's a reason for that. I mean, first of all, we are gonna be heading into Scorpio season on the 22nd of October, which means that we are in, as a collective, in the kind of death rebirth process. So there's that. So we're working with that type of magic, which is a great type of magic, super empowering. You just have to know and be willing to work with it. Um, there is this sense that, you know, with Seven of Swords, it's interesting because we have the Five of Swords and the Seven of Swords. And one of the things that um, really highlights both of these cards is paranoia and worry and looking over the shoulder and, and kind of like um, feeling like you have to sneak around, right? You have to, to secretly do the things that you want to do because you can't trust other people or they're sneaking around on you, whatever. But especially with Seven of Swords, this is about you letting yourself be who you are and not feeling guilty about it, not feeling like you're getting away with something, not feeling like you have to hide and like you have to sneak. And it's important if you're feeling any of those to just witness it, right? Because you're allowed to keep growing and getting, and getting clearer and stronger in who you are and you, you aren't going to be punished. You're not getting away with something. Um, and you, you might have heard that message many times, right? So the Five of Cups, it's interesting. The more I work, do this work, you know, I've been doing this work for years. And the more I work with this tool, the more I love the Five of Cups. Now, it's not a card to stay in forever. It's not here to, uh, you know, live your whole life in. It's a... It's a transitional energy. It's the transition between the close out of a cycle and the beginning of another. And it's that really important moment in between that we often want to skip, but that is so crucial and magical, right? This is the transformation. This is the river sticks. This is that point where you acknowledge, you acknowledge what you've learned, what you've gained, what you've understood this year. You understand it at a much deeper level. And then you choose to move forward. And how powerful is that? Like that to me is where it's at in life. That moment when it happens and that, that like time period when that happens is just so epic. You know, it's like the best part of the movie. <laughs> if you're ever watching a movie, not that I think we should be thinking in narrative forms, because another heads up about October, not super linear. <laughs> so keep that in mind. 
I have some affirmations to take with you in this really nuanced and interesting time. Self-trust, baby. You, ha you have it. You know. You already know, right? I welcome in new visions of my life. I am deeply connected to spirit and spirit always holds me safely. I lean into deeper trust and knowing. I mean, really what the message for my Cancerian family is, is to trust that deeper knowing. There is gonna be a lot of noise that tells you not to, that tells you to shut it down, that tells you to that you are full of crap and that you aren't any the wiser to the world. And I'm here to tell you that's a beautiful gift. It's one you have innately. It's one you are totally allowed to use and it will help you. And you're allowed to utilize it. It's one of your gifts. So sometimes you just need to hear that, right? Um, I love you so much. And I hope I get to see you over on Patreon. We're doing the deep work with Mars Retrograde. We are going through the themes. We are going through it week by week. It's a really powerful time. We'll always, also in October be covering Mercury Retrograde. We're gonna get starting to get prepped for the end of the year. All of those beautiful tools are gonna be there, plus an amazing community of people who are going through all of this together. We're just having dialogues and sharing stories. It's really great. I'd love to see you there. I'll leave the link below. You can also find me on Instagram and on my website. So I'll leave all of that info below. You can also find Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry on her website. I will leave her link below. She's always making something new and beautiful uh, if you're looking to be adorned. Like I said, I love this space so much and talking to you. You mean the world to me and I'm sending you all my love. I will talk to you in November for more of this Scorpio magic that we're working with and just take such good care.